Thank you to everyone who has been sending such great Science Smart questions all year round. And what a year it's been with back to back to back extreme weather events here in British Columbia. The fingerprint of climate change stamped hard on all of them. I wanted to take a moment to answer a few that I haven't been able to get to yet. Let's get right into it, shall we? First question from Vinit, uh, who asks, with the recent atmospheric river events, I get the notion of an atmospheric river holding more water vapor, but how is it transported to our latitudes? The latest research suggests that a cold front just ahead of its passage southerly winds uh, might pull up filaments of water vapor from the main stream that runs around the equator and once those filaments start to make their way northward uh, they become rivers unto themselves okay next question john betts wonders why typically these deluges have been described as hawaiian expresses some of them look like they're coming uh, actually trans-pacific and you're right we call the ones that come from the hawaiian islands pineapple express colloquially, but atmospheric rivers can originate from far across the Pacific. Colloquially, we sometimes call those uh, tropical punches, but they're all under the umbrella term of atmospheric rivers. Charles from Cranbrook has a question about feedback loops, specifically to uh, Earth's albedo. Now, albedo is a measurement of how uh, reflective or absorbent the surface of something is, and it uh, is connected to the darkness. So if an object is uh, closer to black in color, it will absorb, absorb much more solar radiation uh, than if something was white, much more will get reflected. So thinking about the Arctic, uh, the Arctic sea ice uh, melting more and more to reveal the dark ocean surface, that in turn absorbs more solar radiation, more melting, and we get into one of these positive fe feedback loops. Mist or drizzle? Marie wants to know the difference between the two. Well, there is technically a meteorological definition for the two, uh, and they come down to the size of the water droplets. Mist water droplets are so tiny that it feels like they're being suspended in air. In fact, according to the World Meteorological Organization, they're only 10 to 15 microns in diameter. Now, drizzle is also very small, but they're between 0.5 or smaller millimeters in diameter. And now, you're science smart. If you have any more great science questions, send me a tweet or an email and I'll try to get it answered. Thanks.